we're teaching a series of lessons which we're calling Maximize the Moment. Maximize the Moment. And we're into the second part of this series, which we're entitling Master the Moment. There are certain things that we have to master. You've got to become accomplished at these things if you're going to reach your destiny, fulfill the purpose for which God has created you. This part two of Master the Moment, I'm going to call it Deliberate Destinations. Deliberate Destinations. Now, here's what I mean by this. Do we have a clear map of where we're going? I didn't say that you know all the steps, what you've got to do to get there. I'm just simply saying, you've got to know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, then any road will do you. But if you have a destination, a clear, deliberate destination, then you've got to have a roadmap. What this means is simply a plan, a plan. A plan is crucial to the results of what we are going to accomplish in life. And so let me teach you some things concerning deliberate destinations. Here's point number one, developing the plan. Develop the plan. I, I, I find that so many people fail to do this. They, uh, I, I've said so many times, I've always been afraid I would get to heaven with a brand new brain because I never used it down here. Wear your brain out. Think. God wants us to think. It's not a sin to think. See, in, in developing plans, one of the things you have to have is what we call long-range goal, long-term goals. These are things we're not going to accomplish in one day or one year. It's going to take a little while for us to get there. Now, the truth is, Many things in life are this way. It always takes a little longer and costs a little more than you thought it would to reach the goal. But what are your long-term goals? It's the big picture in life. The big picture. It's your mission. What God has called you to accomplish. Not just this year, but with your life. With your life. Where are you going? Then secondly, we need to make short-term goals. These are the things that we need to get done today. We need to be working on right now that's going to move us toward our long-term goal. The short-range goal, that's our day-to-day -day strategy. As we develop the plan of how we're going to reach our destination, how we're going to fulfill our destiny. We need to learn how to weigh our daily decisions against how they will help us fulfill God's call upon our life. Should I be involved in this? And this, this becomes the contest, not about good and evil, but good and best. Good becomes the enemy of the best. And many times we're not doing the best things because we're too busy doing good things. It's not that they are sinful, no, but they are simply not helping us reach our goal. So learn how to weigh your daily decisions this way, how they're going to help us to fulfill the call of God upon our life. One of the things that happens in life is as Christians, as believers, we will pray and we ask God to, to give us a goal in life. And God responds by giving us a plan in life. We weren't expecting a plan. We were trying to reach some kind of a goal. You, you find many examples of this in Scripture. For instance, Moses before Pharaoh. With Moses, God gives Moses a plan how to face Pharaoh. He gives him the plan. Another one, Joshua. Joshua is facing a big battle with the walls of Jericho. What does God do? He gives him a plan, a plan how to conquer Jericho. Here's another one, Elijah. Elijah, he's going to face King Ahab. What does God do? God gives him a plan how to confront the wicked king Ahab. And so this is what happens so many times is that we go to God for goals and God gives us a plan. See, 
I think it's the reason that many people fail to recognize the answers to their prayers. It's because they pray and ask God for a miracle, and God gives them a plan. Now, the truth is, if they will work the plan, they will receive their miracle. If Joshua will do what God told him to do, march around the walls for seven days, if he will work the plan, he will receive the miracle. But I think it's why a lot of people miss the miracles in their lives is because they have no clear plan. They do not work the plan. See, without a plan in life, there is no target in life. There's no direction for us to be aiming for, to shoot the arrow in that direction, to point our lives in that direction. You remember the story of Christ when Jesus, it says he was in Samaria and he set his face like a flint toward Jerusalem. He's focused on Jerusalem. Why? Because he knows he's going there to die, to be crucified. That is his destiny. Nobody else understood that. Even his disciples were not hearing that at all. You're not going to die. You're not going to be crucified. They'll never kill you. But Jesus had a plan. He had a goal. He had a target. And he was focused on fulfilling that. Now, let me talk about a second thing. The second thing is what I'm going to call indecisiveness is lethal to accomplishment. Here's the problem for so many people is God gives them a plan and they fail to act on it. I think many times it comes back to courage, courage. They do not have the courage to act on the plan. It's been many years ago, but an associate pastor said to me one day, he said to me, Dale, you will always accomplish more for God than I will because you're willing to take the risk. And he was right. He was absolutely right. And I found that's what happens with many people in life. They don't have courage to act on the plan. The truth is, many people fail simply because they can't make a decision. They can't decide which direction to go. It's a funny story from many years ago. I had a friend that lived in Kansas City and, and he told about this uh, railroad crossing that went over one of their busy streets and they had a pillar right in the middle of the street, a concrete pillar where, you know, to support the weight of the trains going over this busy street. And, and uh, they had flashing lights, arrows that are pointing to both lanes on both sides of it. And this dear lady ran right into the pillar with the flashing lights. And the policeman said to her, ma'am, couldn't you see the pillar? Couldn't you see those flashing lights? And, and she said, I, I, I'm sorry, I just couldn't make up my mind which lane I wanted to go. And we, we laugh about that, but it's true with so many people in life. They can't make the decision. They don't have the courage to act on the plan. Therefore, it is never fulfilled. They never reach their destination. Now, in making decisions, something I need to caution you is, your decision is no better than the information that you're acting upon. Good decisions are always well-informed decisions. If you know the facts, if you have the information, then you must have the courage to act upon it. See, without, without good counsel, without wise counsel, we will not make wise decisions. Wise decisions cannot be made without good information. Poor information will cause you to make foolish decisions. So get the best counsel that you can. Now, let, let, let me give you some counsel here concerning how to make wise decisions. In making wise decisions, here's some of the things that you do. Number one, experience must accomplish knowledge. Oh, there, there is nothing worse in life than an educated ignoramus. 
I'm sorry to say it that way, but that's, that's the way some people are. They, they know a lot more in their head with facts and figures. They got the information, but they don't have any experience because it's in the experience that you get the wisdom to know how to apply the information, how to put the information to work. So always when you're looking for good counsel, look for people that have some experience that goes along with their knowledge. Another thing that we need to do is gather information from several different sources. Don't just rely on one individual to give you counsel. You need counsel from several sources. The, the Bible tells us this. In fact, it was the wise man that tells us this. And I, I find that very amazing that the man with the gift of wisdom tells us over and over again, there is safety in a multitude of counselors. He didn't just say it once. He repeated it again and again. There is safety in a multitude of counselors. Now that's the wise man talking. So we need to do the same thing. Go to different sources to get the information that we need to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish, to make the decision. Decisions should not be made or based only on first information. This is what they say, getting a second opinion. That, that is so wise, so wise, because we all have blind spots in life. We all have places of where we are ignorant. So it is good to get a multitude of counselors. But then it brings the decision back to us. See, the truth is, the final decision is ours. Not somebody else's. We have to take responsibility for it. So we go to others to get counsel, to get advice, but we're the one that have to sift it through our spirit. And I find one of the best ways of doing that is with prayer, and meditation. It's those moments of quietness when you get alone with God and you think and you pray, you meditate about the information that you have and the decision that you are to make and then act upon it. Now, one other thing that I will say concerning getting good information is the more that we move into new areas, God leads you into a new place into a new job, into a, a, a different stage of your life. The more that we move into new areas, the more we need a multitude of uh, intelligent counselors to help us. People that God brings into our life to help us to get where we know God wants us to go. So these are the things that we need to experience and learn if we're going to make wise decisions. Now, let me talk about a third area in life. A third area in deliberate destinations is learn to distinguish the different voices. There are many different voices. The truth of it is all of us are listening to someone, every one of us. There are people around us. There are different voices in our life. So learn how to distinguish them. Here, here point number A is what I call the external voices. The voices that are outside us. There are many of these. Uh, for instance, one that we all will hear when we start accomplishing anything in life is the cries of the critic. Oh yes, the cries of the critic. Usually, those are the loudest voices, the voices of the critics. They, they, they want to make sure that they are heard, that you hear what they are saying. It's amazing, amazing the hurtful things that people will say about others that they don't even know. They've never even met them, and yet they know more than they do. They're criticizing them. 
uh, it, it's one of the things that I must confess is it irritates me a lot is to see a person that has done very little with their life criticizing someone that has done great things with their life. And I want to say, what, what gives you the right to be so critical of someone that has accomplished much more than you have? But it's the voice of the critic. And you're always going to have them if you're going to accomplish anything with your life if you're going to master the moment. Here, here's another one of those external voices, what I would call tongues of deceit. Tongues of deceit. What, 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 what are tongues of deceit? They're the flattering voices. They're the voices that are always telling us what we want to hear. They're always telling us the, the good things. They're like what Jesus called the false prophets. Everybody liked the false prophets because the false prophets made them feel good about themselves. The, these people are those that speak good of us all the time. They're nothing more than what we call yes men. They, they're always around us telling us how great we are. Oh, it's flattery, my friend flattery and it will lead you to destruction it will not lead you to your destination it will lead you to destruction they're false encouragers these are the same people that will allow us to destroy our lives and then we'll say i knew they were making a mistake so beware of those voices but then there are other external voices that we need to listen to it's what i would call songs of encouragement Songs of encouragement. What do I mean by that? These are people that are true friends. They can see our potential. They see something within us that God has placed within us that many times we cannot even see ourselves. They see things within us and they help draw that out of us. But they love us enough to patiently tell us the truth they don't flatter us because when they see that we're making a mistake or they see that we have things we could improve we need to improve they will confront us about that they've talked to us about those things and by doing so they're encouraging us to reach our destination now it is true sometimes the truth hurts and we don't want to hear it. That, that's why the false prophets would never be in that category. They were the flatterers, always telling people what they thought they wanted to hear. But a true friend, a true friend, he will tell you the truth. There, there is a good verse of proverb that tells us about this when he says, the kisses of an enemy are deceitful, but the wounds of a friend are faithful. Someone that loves you enough to tell you the truth, but they're not trying to hurt you. They're trying to help you. Now, in every one of our lives, this is even true in the life of Christ. Do you remember when Jesus gathered his disciples around and he said, who do men say that I am? When they answered that, then he said, who do you say that I am? Every one of us needs that. Everyone needs someone they can ask, who do you say that I am? All of us need that because we all need encouragement from time to time. We need uh, some outside voices to help us gain perspective of our life. And so these encouragers, these encouragers are committed to telling us the truth, not what we want to hear. But they always refuse to speak to us out of jealousy or spite. My, I've seen so many lives that have been damaged because someone was jealous of them. And so they're critical of them. They say harmful things about them or they are spiteful because they feel like they should have that position. And God help us to beware of those voices. Now, let's talk about internal voices. The internal voices are the voices that are the most powerful in our lives. They should always be. We listen to those that are outside, 
but it's the voices on the inside that are the most real. For instance, the voice of the Holy Spirit. There should be no more powerful voice in our life than the voice of the Holy Spirit, of God speaking to us. Learn to listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. It means more to me than I can even explain. When I know that God has said something that has more value, more weight than anything else in life. And so we learn by listening to these internal voices. The, the way to overcome evil is by doing good. You don't just sit around and listen, but you act on the plan that you know you've heard from God. You know this is the direction that you need to be going. And by doing this, you're able to accomplish your goal. Now, how tragic that so many people are listening to the wrong voices. The wrong voices. It will bring destruction in your life when you do this. And as I said, all of us are listening to someone. And I, I've seen people that just because they're flattering them and telling them what they want to hear. I work with pastors, with ministers most of my time. And I've seen some tragic mistakes because the minister, the man of God, was listening to the wrong voices, the wrong counsel, because they were telling him what he wanted to hear. They were telling them things that made them feel good about themselves, but they were not being honest with them. They were using them. They were deceiving them. They were setting them up for failure. Don't do that, my friend. Do not do that. If we do that, we're never going to master the moment and fulfill our destiny. It is only by learning these secrets that we're going to be able to be everything God has created us to be. See, the way that we need to learn to think of life is think of it like a symphony, like beautiful music, beautiful mis music. You have to learn to mix the voices of our soul properly. By mixing them properly, it will create a harmonious sound that will be beautiful for all that listen. But if we don't mix them properly, if we listen to the wrong voices and we, we're paying attention to things and giving ear to things which we shouldn't be, then we're going to make foolish decisions. We're going to make unwise decisions that's going to keep us from fulfilling the destiny that God has created for us. I, I encourage you, to re, I remind you, your life is not an accident. No, your life is a gift from God. God gave you that. God gave you the talents and abilities that you have. Now, what you need to do is to learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You need to surround yourself by people who have songs of encouragement. They will tell you the truth, but they speak it in love. They speak it in love, and you know that they are telling you what is best for you. That they can see things that you cannot see yourself. And by listening to them, by, by mixing this properly within our lives, it helps us to fulfill our potential in God. And so I encourage you, whatever stage you are, wherever you are in life, your life is not an accident. God has a beautiful plan for your life and you can reach your destiny. You can be everything that God has created you to be if you will simply learn how to listen to the right voices, mix them properly, make wise decisions based upon the plan that God has given to you. And if you will do that, friend, then your life can be richer. It can be filled with all the goodness of God, I, I encourage you in your spiritual journey, do not allow the critics, do not allow the, the naysayers, do not allow the people that they really do not have your interest in mind. They're thinking of themselves, what they can do, what they can accomplish, how they can control you. Beware of that and surround yourself with godly people that love you. They will help you to reach your destiny in life. So on your spiritual journey, I encourage you, develop a plan, 
a deliberate destination. Where do you want to go with life? Where do you believe God has called you to go with life? And start making your decisions based upon the plan that God has given to you. Your life is not an accident. No, your life is a gift from God. And he has some beautiful things that he wants to accomplish in and through you and make you a blessing to all those that are around you. May God bless you on your Christian journey as you follow on in fulfilling your destination.